Welcome back to the GCN Racing News Show. On the menu this week, some Dutch beer at the Amstel Gold Race, a piglet at Trobro Lyon, and some Belgian waffles at the, well, at the Belgian waffle ride over in California. Plus, we've got more from the Commonwealth Games on the Gold Coast of Australia and a Tour de France tune up up in Brittany. We shall start though with Amstel Gold, which marks the transition of the spring classics over from the cobbles to the climbs. What I like particularly about this transition is the fact that Amstel is also like a crossover. So you get riders from the cobbles like Sagan, Van Avermaet and Van Mark competing against the climbers warming up for Liège-Bastogne-Liège such as Valverde, Nibali and Uran. 12 riders broke clear at the start and managed to steal a whopping 16 minute advantage. Eventually there were panic stations behind as the gap was still large with 70k still to go, making the race particularly fast in the main peloton behind. The first proper action came on the steep slopes of the Kuytenberg. Former winners Roman Kreuziger and Enrico Gasparotto got a gap and bridged to what remained of the league group. Whilst behind, Greg Van Avermaet and Rudy Millard got stuck basically in no man's land. Michael Matthews' challenge came to a very disappointing end after a puncture which was caused by this small shard of metal. The Australian must be wondering when he's going to get a bit of good luck in 2018. Eventually, the front group was caught and then further whittled down to just 10 rides, including pre-race favourites Sagan and Valverde. And it did feel like all eyes were on them. The other riders also seemed to sense that, and when Michael Vulgren made a second scintillating attack, only Roman Kreuziger of Mitchton Scott reacted, whilst the rest all looked at each other. Gasparotto eventually escapes too, and for a long time sat agonisingly close to the two up front. And for Vulgren, it must have been a bit of a nerve wracking sight when he looked behind. The Italian had both outsmarted and outsprinted him two years previously, and he wasn't going to let that happen a second time. He kept on the power enough to prevent Gasparotto bridging and eventually managed to even encourage Roman Kreuzger to take one final turn in the last K before easily out sprinting him to the line. It was a measured, calculated and mature victory for Michael Vulgren, who has now won both Onloop Het Newsblad and Amstel Gold in the same season. And according to Café Roubaix over on Twitter, the only other ride to do that is a certain Eddie Merckx. No pressure for the future then, Michael. Uh, I particularly like it though when a winner is also a nice guy. And that certainly seems to be the case with Vulgren. Loads of fellow professionals took to social media to express their congratulations. And I think this tweet from Mark Cavendish sums things up perfectly. I'm officially a Michael Vulgren fanboy. If you watch him race, you like him. If you speak to him, you like him even more. And so it seems even more fitting this week toward Vulgren, GCN's Rider of the Week award. We had been considering giving the award to Lawson Craddock though. The EF Education First rider had been part of the early breakaway and incredibly managed to cling on to some of the favourites, eventually finishing ninth. Training Peaks have once again been kind enough to show us his power from the race and it was quite the day in the saddle. His average power for 6 hours and 40 minutes was 285 watts, whilst his normalised was 329 watts. Not far off his teammate Taylor Finney's from Paris-Roubaix last Sunday, but when you consider that Craddock weighs 17 kilograms less, I'd say it's probably even more impressive. As was the effort to get into the initial break in the first place. 22 minutes of attacking where his normalised power was 412 watts. His variability index in that first period was 1.26, variability index being normalised power divided by the average. This basically shows that the effort at the beginning was far from steady, with loads of accelerations as he tried to get into the breakaway of the day. And then the final 18 minutes of the race saw his normalised power still very high at 392 watts. Bear in mind that that was into the seventh hour of racing and he'd already got 250 kilometres in his legs. What I particularly like though is this graph. Now we often talk about burning matches in races, sustained periods where you go into the red. You've only got so many matches to burn in a race and here we can see them in red. Craddock burns a few at the start trying to get into that break but then managed to ride a very controlled race in the break leaving him with a vital few matches in reserve for the end. Uh, thanks go to Training Peaks and also Lawson Craddock's coach Jim Miller for that insight. Really intriguing stuff which puts pro level racing into some perspective. Total kilojoules burned by the rider? 6,900. Hence tweets like this from US champion Larry Warbass just the day before. Finally, the race also marked the last Amstel gold for Dutchman Bram Tanking, and this is how many jerseys he's worn over the course of his 18 year career, as modelled perfectly by himself.
The women's race split apart far earlier in the race with 60 kilometers to go. A group formed out front again on the Koitenberg, and although many of the favorites had missed it, they soon forged a two and a half minute lead over the rest of the peloton. With most teams represented up front, there was nobody to really make a concerted chase behind, and it soon became clear that the winner would eventually come from the front group. From that group of eight, world champion Chantal Black attacked on the Coburg with 20 kilometers to go, taking an inform Alexis Ryan with her, and they were joined over the top by Amanda Spratt of Mitchelton Scott. However, the group had swelled back to six as we headed into the last 10 k's of the race, and then temporarily back up to eight at the foot of the final ascent of the Cowberg. Lucinda Brand was the first to attack, riding for Team Sunweb, then Amanda Spratt also gave it a nudge, and with only Black able to follow, we were down to just three riders. Over the top though, with Alexis Ryan and Rihanna Marcus not too far behind, it did seem as though Spratt was riding to keep a place on the podium. Perhaps a little bit understandable, given that she's never actually finished on the podium of a one day World Tour race before. The sprint between Brand and Black was taken in some dominant fashion by the world champion. Just like the men's winner, Black delivered a cool, calm and collected performance, and with it, a popular home win. Now, before we finish completely with Amstel Gold, we would like to say a big get well soon to Lucy Kennedy, who suffered multiple fractures after a nasty crash in the race. The Brabant's appeal typically marks the transition over from the Cobbled Classics to the Hillier One Days as we head towards the Ardennes. It doesn't have quite the level of rider as a race such as Amstel, but nevertheless, it does serve as a good warm up for those who do take part. A minute silence was held at the start of the race in honor of Michael Golartz, and in a really nice show of respect, the race was attended by the entire Verandas Willems Crayland team, even those that didn't take part in the race on the day. There was a particularly strong move from Jack Haig of Mitchelton Scott and Tosh van der Sander, who were caught with just 12 Ks to go. A counter-attack went immediately with the likes of Enrico Gasparotto, Carlos Verona and Serge Powers, but counter-attacking the counter-attack was Tim Wellens of Lotto Soudal with seven kilometers still remaining. He opened a 20 second gap with quite astonishing ease, and whilst the chasing peloton did sweep up the rest of the escapees, they made little or no dent into Wellen's lead. In the end, he had plenty of time to sit up and salute the crowd. Second on the day was last year's winner, Sonny Colbrelli, with Wellen's teammate, Tish Benut, finishing in third. We also had the first ever Brabant's Appeal for the women, so very well done to the organizers for that. There, a group of eight riders, including Mariana Voss, were caught with five Ks to go, where eventually we had a sprint from a small group of around 20. It was won by Ali Cipollini's Marta Bastianelli. The former world champion has already won Ghent Wilbergham just a couple of weeks back, and this marks her fifth win of 2018. Leah Kirkman finished second, whilst Mariana Voss had enough strength left to take third. Trobro Leon is sometimes referred to as the hipster's classic, a term I think coined by journalist Daniel Freib. This race was really kind of the original Strada Bianca. It's a race which started back in 1984 and takes in multiple sectors of gravel farm tracks that are far rougher than their Italian equivalent. Rain started to fall inside the last 20 kilometers, making conditions particularly slippery. 21-year-old Norwegian national champion Rasmus Tiller found himself alone up front with 15 k's to go, but five kilometers further on, he hit the deck and got caught by the group behind. Laporte of Cofidis made a move with six k's to go, and that was the one that stuck. Despite the best efforts of last year's winner, Damien Godin, he couldn't close the gap to his compatriot, who took his fourth win of the year. Fair play to Godin though, he spent much of the finale basically yo-yoing off the back of the lead group, but somehow managed to find the strength to attack them all in the end. Now, you will probably be wondering who won the piglet, which is awarded each year to the first Breton. Well, the lucky man this year was Olivier Legac, and here he is pictured having a shower with the piglet in front of him. Oink oink. The one day Tour de Finistère in France on Saturday gave us a glimpse as to what is to come on a tricky and technical stage five of this year's Tour de France. And as such, it attracted a number of riders who'll be looking to do well this July. Amongst them, Roman Bardet, Warren Barguil, TJ Van Garderen and Richie Porte. A dozen riders, including Bardet and Van Garderen, broke clear on the 10 kilometer finishing circuit. And coming out best in the sprint was Jonathan Iver, possibly best known for taking a Paranese stage victory this year after refusing to work with Nils Pollitt on the run-in. 
over at the Commonwealth Games on the Gold Coast in Australia, and it was once again the home nation that dominated proceedings on the road, just as they had done previously in the velodrome. Cameron Meyer somehow managed to win the time trial despite his preparations being mainly concentrated on the velodrome, whilst Katrin Garford took a convincing win in the women's events. In the road race, it was Steele von Hoff's turn to shine, a performance made all the more incredible by the fact that just a few weeks previous he'd broken four vertebrae in a crash at a local criterium. This is what his rehabilitation looked like soon after, thanks to his team Benelong Swiss Wellness for providing the pictures. Uh, to take gold so soon after being in that state is quite remarkable. Apparently doctors weren't too pleased when he took his brace off earlier than recommended, but it does seem to have worked for him. Chloe Hosking sealed the Australian dominance by winning the women's road event in what was a very well drilled team effort. And we should also give a shout out to Wales too, who managed a silver with John Mould in the men's race and a bronze with Danny Rowe in the women's. And also huge congratulations to Annie Lars, sister of our very own Tom. She won gold in the mountain bike cross country and there'll be more on that on GMBN's race news show today, as well as GCN's show tomorrow. We're taking the racing indoors now. This Saturday saw the Zwift Kiss EU Crit Series finals come to London. 20 finalists from across Europe battered it out at the live finals following the winter long Crit Series. A new format took in preems and eliminations in the points classification. In both the men's and the women's races, it came down to a reduced bunt sprint. Kristin Flack, the Norwegian Zwift national champion, took the women's European crown, whilst Gavin Dempster from Scotland took the men's title. And now for something a little bit different. The Canyon Belgian Waffle Ride is an annual event in California, now in its seventh year, and organizers say it's the most unique cycling event in the US. It is 133 miles or 214 kilometers, which takes place over a mixture of road and then 17 dirt sections that total 40 miles themselves. There are even 14 water or footbridge crossings and 13 categorized climbs. It's a tough event to say the very least. And those aren't your standard Strada Bianca sectors or even Trobro Leon. They are properly gnarly, as I think the locals would say. Winners on the day were Brian McCulloch in the men's and Larissa Connors in the women's, who backed up her win from 12 months ago. And she claims that the secret to her success is eating waffles for breakfast year round. Of course, events like this though are just as much about taking part and that looks like a fun, but very hard event to take part in. Right, that is it for this week's show. Join us again next week for La Flèche Foulon and then the oldest classic of them all, Liège Baston Liège. In the meantime, if you would like an explanation on the difference between normalized power and average power, we answered that and more on last week's Ask GTN Anything, which you can find just here.